So this is a macro embedded office document. They take a Word document or a spreadsheet and they embed Visual Basic code in it. And they're really hard to scan with security products. And this is exactly what First IO's red team used for a while. Yeah, theirs didn't do PowerShell like this one does, but this is exactly um, how the embed worked. So what it would do, if you look at it, you've got this Office document and here's the document file. It's literally just Microsoft Word, right? But look for object linking and embedding, OLE. Something is embedded inside of the document. The document is broken up into these seven data streams, but three of the seven data streams have macro code in it. Someone has put code inside of this document. Unless your sandbox can execute this malware, it's really hard to write a signature for it. So you have to have something that can move this file over into a sandbox and actually run it because with your regular command line analysis, it's gonna be really hard to do. This is why on the security control side, you start to say, well, does your email solution have some sort of sandbox? And does your firewall solution have some sort of sandbox? Because now we're saying all files that come in and out of the network, do we move it into a sandbox and actually run it to see what it does? Here is all obfuscated code. Can you see all this code? They've randomized the names of everything in it. These aren't the real names. But what someone has done is they ran a tool to take every name of the functions or every name of the variables in the source code and randomize its name to look like just junk. This is obfuscated code. A guy looking at this has to write all this out by hand and put it all together by hand. It's, it's tedious work. This is the introduction to reverse engineering. So what you would do is you would take all of the data streams. So I'll go, okay, here's data stream three. And I put it in here like this. So now I'm gonna grab data stream four. I'm gonna put that in there. And now I'm gonna grab data stream five. And I'm gonna put that in there. So now I got all these data streams. And now I'm gonna take each section and here's the first subroutine. A subroutine is a function, right? So if I highlight this, can you see that it highlights down here? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find and replace, and I'm gonna call that A3 function one. Then, I'm gonna grab this one. That's gonna be A3 function one, command one. You see what's going on? So this variable long string, see it? So you notice that I'm going through all of this code, aren't I? And I'm labeling like what it is. So this is gonna be a four. It's gonna be function one argument one as a string. You see what I'm doing with all this? So you go through this whole thing 
right? And then you break it all back down into what it is so that you can rewrite this code. So this is me really trying to get an understanding of what this is. Now all that code keeps calling this overly long string variable, which is this. So you see how big this is? Huge, isn't it? Well, that's the actual payload. So that's the actual malicious payload. And what we figure out is all that source code is the encoder decoder for the payload. So since the payload is encoded, that's the reason why it circumvents detection. This is what it's actually doing. So it's gonna run PowerShell with execution policy bypass. What that means is, you know, Microsoft only allows trusted scripts to run. That's an execution policy. Well, you can bypass the execution policy. You can say, I will run scripts that are not signed by Microsoft. And then you can also say, I want to run them as no profile because you don't want to be attached to a regular user. Otherwise, you'll inherit that user's permissions and that user's group policy. So you're saying, don't, don't treat me as a trusted script, allow it to run, and don't attach me to a regular user. And then you see that that sucker goes out, downloads a file, you see it? And then runs the file. And all of that is inside of a Word document. So that one's nice because that one's pretty sophisticated. I've got one of these that's a PDF as well. Same thing. The only difference is the language is not VB script, the language is JavaScript. And all that is is just what is the threat at the time? At the time, mm -hmm. there was a ton of Adobe PDF vulnerabilities that allowed you to embed content in the PDF. So it was a really good thing to use a few years ago. Whereas now you're starting to see people go a little bit of other directions. But you're kind of seeing that same thing where for us as blue teams, this is a moving target, isn't it? Yeah, this is not easy. Even if you're pretty good at this, this is not easy. So they're having to buy a lot of software. They're having to buy a lot of security products today to help the analyst catch all this stuff.